Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to Keep Reading, your channel for great book recommendations. I'm Reuben Hepplethwaite and it's been a really great week for me as my channel hit 50,000 views. So thanks to everyone that's been watching my videos and uh, I hope that you continue to watch them and uh, enjoy them as much as I do making them. So uh, I thought that I would um, make a video, I thought it'd be a good idea to, uh, to do a video all about the three methods of uh, taking in books. Um, that is uh, real paper books, so uh, something like this. Um, or using an e-reader, you know, like a Kindle or something like that. Um, and also the other method is uh, audio books. So something like uh, using your iPhone to listen to an audio book. Um, I personally use all three methods, but when I uh, started to look into it, uh, there are some sort of very interesting pros and cons for each method. And hopefully by watching this video, you can work out which is best for you, or at least understand how uh, you can make use of all three methods to suit the different circumstances uh, in your life to, uh, to increase your reading, learning and uh, enjoyment of books. So I'm going to concentrate firstly on the debate between real books and uh, e-readers. And then I'll be covering the merits and the drawbacks of listening to narrated books uh, rather than reading them. So I'm sure that everyone would agree that real books are the authentic reading experience. And most readers uh, love the look, the, you know, the smell and the feel of uh, crisply bound pages. You know, real book reading is a sensory experience and you interact with the, the texture, the thickness, the weight of the book, which has to be a lot more satisfying than, doesn't really smell of much, um, you know, it's not very tactile. Um, you know, it has to be better than an e-reader. Um, so also the, the physicality of a real book can lend more realness to the characters and stories. And each book is a new physical experience. For me, one of the main reasons that I prefer a real book is that you physically sort of feel your progress through the book. You know where you are. Um, and as the remaining pages get fewer and fewer, you have a, a tactile sense of progress. E-readers try to replicate this by giving you a percentage progress or a length of time uh, to the end of the book. But this doesn't seem to have the same narrative or orienting effect as uh, reading a real book. In her book, Reader Come Home, uh, The Reading Brain in the Digital World, Marianne Wolfe says that text in print form um, from a real book slows your mind down, allowing time for critical thinking processes that cultivate empathy and perspective. Things read by paperback stay in your mind longer um, than they do on an e-reader and you naturally focus more. Wolf, uh, in her book, she refers to a study in Norway where people were given a short story to read with either an e-book or a real book. And when they were questioned later, those who had read the real book were more likely to remember plot points in the right order. This comes back to uh, physically feeling your progress through a real book. And Daniel uh, Willingham, the professor of psychology at the University of Virginia, and uh, he's also the author of Raising Kids Who Read. That's a very good book if you've got children. Um, he says that as you're reading a narrative, the sequence of events is important. And knowing where you are in a real book helps you build that arc of narrative. Conversely, e-readers change the way you retain information and you read at a faster pace, which provokes multitaskings and uh, skimming which can affect whether you'll remember the uh, crucial plot details. This is also true of audiobooks, which we'll get onto later. Other advantages of real books um, you know, include the used book market, which can be a uh, great value. Um, and also you can gift books to your friends or donate them to charity. 
in addition, you know, who doesn't love going to a real bookstore and spending time browsing before choosing a book or two? I know that it always makes me feel, uh, you know, really good. And uh, when I've bought a book, I feel like I, I own something uh, rather than uh, you just using something as you do when you're reading an ebook. Lastly, a filled bookcase can uh, decorate and breathe an air of intelligence into a room or house. If you love a book enough, it can stay on your shelf like an old friend that you can stop by and visit whenever you like. But e-readers, they do have, uh, you know, they have many advantages. Uh, they give you instant access to thousands of stories at your fingertips, you know, without having to go to a bookstore. Also, your e-reader will, you know, will never be out of stock and you don't have to wait uh, for delivery. Also, they're very portable, you know, they're very light and uh, they're great for traveling light. And uh, if you read a lot on holiday, you, know, you might get through four or five books during a two week vacation. And real books can take up uh, a lot of space in your luggage. This is not a problem with your e-reader. You know. um, one of the great benefits of, of an e-reader is, uh, is being able to adjust the font size and the spacing, which can be very useful if you don't have 2020 vision or if you have a reading disorder like dyslexia. A study in 2013 published in the uh, scientific journal PLOS One found that uh, people with dyslexia read more effectively and with greater ease when using an e-reader compared to a real book. You know, not being able to adjust the font size with a real book uh, can lead to eye strain, headaches and dry eyes. Another great advantage of the e-reader is that you can look up words in the dictionary as you read. You know, let's face it, how many people know what crenellations are? This is great for young readers and uh, there are also lots of fun features like uh, sharing highlighted quotes on social media and using digital bookmarks. E-readers can be great for young, reluctant readers uh, that are likely to have more of an affinity with electronic devices. Books on your e-reader can often be uh, you know, very good value when compared with real paper books. Check out BookBub for deal alerts. Also, many e-books on your device are free, especially the classics. New releases also tend to be cheaper on an e-reader. And for those of you that like uh, reading independent, uh, self-published authors, an e-reader is an absolute must because often these books are only available in digital format. An e-reader can give you access to writing that you otherwise wouldn't be able to read. So um, for those of you that like to read in bed too, um, and don't want to disturb your partner by having the light on, if your e-reader is backlit, which most are these days, you can read in the dark without bothering anyone. I was also surprised to learn that uh, e-readers are more environmentally friendly and have less of an environmental impact than real books. The manufacture of uh, one of these e-readers is um, it, it produces about as much CO2 as producing 30 printed books. Yeah, most avid readers will offset this within a year by switching to e-books. But one of the major drawbacks of an e-reader is the exposure to blue light, which can increase the risk of macular degeneration. Blue light penetrates all the way into the retina. That's the, uh, the inner lining of the back of the eye. And too much exposure to blue light can damage light sensitive cells in the retina. Also, the artificial light emitted from uh, screens can make sleeping more difficult. And this can lead to adverse impacts on health. And a study published in uh, 2014 in the journal PNAS found that reading an ebook before bedtime decreases the production of melatonin, 
uh, which preps the body for sleep. Although e-readers have a very long battery life, unlike real books, they do need to be recharged and you do need access to Wi-Fi to download a new title. So if you really want to go off grid, it has to be a real book. Right, so you should now have enough information to work out which reading method suits you best or which method is best in a particular circumstance. But we have uh, an important piece of the jigsaw to fill in, and that is the audiobook. So you'll probably listen to an audiobook on one of your uh, devices, probably your phone, or it could be an iPad or something like that. Um, I find that where audiobooks really come into their own is when you want to multitask. I listen to them in the car, at the gym, uh, cleaning the house, or even relaxing in the bath. Being able to do something else whilst taking in a book is a great benefit, especially for those that lead a hectic lifestyle. And uh, they can provide a convenient, if not authentic, alternative to traditional reading. I've found that uh, the narrator can be really important with audiobooks. Some voices just grate on you, uh, like Brendan Kane in his book, One Million Followers, or Graham Hancock in his book, Fingerprints of the Gods. Other narrators are perfect and enhance the listening experience. Uh, an example of this is uh, Malcolm Gladwell in his book, Talking to Strangers. Audiobooks also can be brilliant for young readers and uh, helps with pronunciation of difficult words, names, places, etc. Also, audiobooks are great for children that are reluctant readers, and it's been shown that listening alone can expand a person's vocabulary. The main debate, however, with audiobooks is the personal versus social experience of reading. You know, listening to an audiobook can elicit a more emotional response to the content, as it's a more social experience to hear the vocal nuances, expressions, sarcasm, etc. that you take in when you hear someone speak. And I find that they work particularly well for uh, memoirs that are narrated by the celebrity, actor or musician, etc. Audiobooks, however, are not as personal as reading because when uh, reading, your inner voice is responsible for creating everything that's not on the page from only the words on the page. I suppose that, uh, you know, audiobooks, you know, they, they're more uh, private when you're in a public uh, area because nobody knows what you're listening to. But a real book, you know, in a, in a public space um, could provide some social interaction if that's what you're after, not just judgmental eyes. So we've come to the end of the video and hopefully it's given you some insight. Uh, I suppose what I learned from the research on the topic is that limiting yourself to only one method of reading is probably not the best approach to maximise your learning and enjoyment of books. I don't think it's a one size fits all situation. And everyone should take advantage of all three methods to be able to fit your reading around your lifestyle and get the most from your love of books. Thanks so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you did and share it with all of your friends. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking the link in the description at the bottom of the video. I post a great book recommendation every Thursday and I hope you can tune in for that. Or you can have a look back at previous uploads in my uh, complete rec recommended reading list on the channel. I'll be back with another video soon. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, stay positive and keep reading.